The Haitian Diaries, August 16th and 19th, 2009, by Hugo, www.hugo.com. This is a revision of the 34-page original manuscript revised by Hugo. Copyright number TXU00165392222, United States of America, Library of Congress. Haiti is one hour behind Eastern Standard Time. August 16, 2009, Sunday, Dimanche. Today is the day I took my trip to Port-au-Prince, Haiti. I, was writing, I am writing this entry while in the Fort Lauderdale International Airport. Much of the conversation in the terminal is full of heavy Creole accents. The purpose of the trip is to see the wonders and beauty of this black republic. The weather is fine and about 86 degrees. I hope my French could assist me throughout this trip. I am very excited about the adventure and especially the tour of La Citadel. As the plane approaches the island of Haiti from the northern side, I couldn't help and notice why the Caribbean got its name. The Caribbean Sea is so blue, you feel that when the plane turned towards it, you were falling into it. As we touched down at Haiti Toussaint L'Ouverture International Airport, I couldn't help but notice all the people around the airport. Now the travelers' fun began. I was told that the only cars available were standard stick shifts. I haven't driven a standard in over 20 years. Second, the direction I got from the internet was of no use. I tried to drive to the hotel only to stall in the middle of traffic with Tap Taps, a beautiful colored bus, truck bus, full of people and taxis cursing me in Creole. I got out of the car and walked over to the policeman and asked him to help. He told me to follow him. Through all the cuts, turns, and huge potholes in the road, I got to La Plaza Hotel of Port-au-Prince where my hotel was. The people at the hotel were extremely helpful as they let me check in early. I decided to walk La Plaza, the center mall of in the capital. The photographs that I and photographed it extra, extraordinary beauty, beautiful monuments. I was greatly surprised to learn that Afro-American sculptor Richard Barthay was the principal creator of several of these national monuments. I photographed Mopama, Mopana Museum de Pantheon National Haitian, the Jean-Jacques Dassault Monument founding father captured by Afro-American sculptor Richard Barthé, which was f fenced and surrounded by many flags of Haiti. The Henri Christophe Monument founding father, the Alexander Saab Petition Monument <coughs> founding father and father of the Pan-American movement, La Plalis Nationale, the Jean Bertrand Aristide Monument, unfinished, which is supposed to be an eternal flame of fire. The Neg Mayon sculpture, the famous unknown maroon, and the Toussaint L'Ouverture Monument in front of La Plaza Nationale, founding father created by Afro-American sculptor Richard Barthé and others. La Plaza was teeming with lovers strangers and people just enjoying the sun. I couldn't help but notice how the beautiful mountains <coughs> embraced the bustling city. <laughs> Everywhere I photographed had a mountain in the background. After my experience in trying to find, find the hotel today, I decided to haggle for a traveling, a traveling companion for my trip to Cap Haitian. Palace San San Susi and La Citadel. The internet mentioned that the trip from Port-au-Prince to Cap Haitien is only 81 miles and about three hours.
the local the locals mentioned that it was about six five to six hours over pothole roads at the entry of the diary I was hag at the en entry of this diary I am haggling with the uh, receptionist at the hotel who is calling her friend or cousin to be my travel companion I had to turn away an elderly gentleman travel companion because he wanted too much the view of my hotel room looks out over the red terracotta clay roof in the beautiful blue Haitian Caribbean sky the latter entry of today I ordered spaghetti and meat sauce after having dinner at the hotel I wanted to check my car rental in the parking lot I noticed that I had a flat tire immediately the concierge the maintenance general and the front desk receptionist and the rifle totem security guard came to my help came to help me a friend of the concierge uh, pulled up and told me that just around the corner near the gas station was a group of men who fixed tires he was right I went right up into the heavy I went right up into the Creole confusion and told them I speak English and needed a tire fix they not only fixed the tire but managed but but changed out the old tire with a brand new spare on the vehicle I paid them fifteen dollars I must say that that today reminded me of my first European visit 25 years ago in Brussels Belgium when going but when nothing but kindness and humanitarianism helped me to survive I shall I like to thank everybody who everyone who helped me today PS I shall not be going to La Citadel and Palace Saint Souci. The people who I was haggling with mentioned that it is a two-day trip and is a, and is impossible to travel and sightsee in one day. Today I was pushed beyond my limits. With a great day, today tomorrow I drive to Jacques uh, Jacmel, Haiti. Good night and may God bless. Hugo. August 17, 2009, Monday, Lundi. This morning I woke up early to take a walk around the capital, Port au Prince. I first wanted to photograph the botanical garden, which is in the interior of the beautiful La Plaza Hotel. It is like a tropical rainforest with wildflowers, terracotta, and singing birds. There are Haitian paintings all around the hotel and in every room. I, uh, it was a pleasure to learn that the night receptionist did speak in, in Spanish. I don't speak much Creole, however my Spanish is much better. So we talked in Spanish and I got much information. I decided to photograph the capital. What a wonder. The steam fog from the mountains are everywhere. My camera lens fogged up several times. It was a very beautiful sight. I saw people jogging around and a group of about 30 women exercising at exercising on La Plaza near the La, the La, the Sal, the Salin monument. I photographed them the people are very physically fit. The capital of Haiti is full of much history. Mountains are everywhere. I stumbled on a large Catholic cathedral, Notre Dame -le de l'Assomption, and, and attended a morning chanting mass, hundreds of people in the morning for worship. I continue walking the capital. Every turn was breathtaking. The people wake up early in the capital. I made it back to the back, I made it back for the continental breakfast and had breakfast with a friend from Haiti who had a bread factory here, but he lives in New York City. One o'clock PM Jacques Mel 
the mountain region and Massif de la Salle region, Haiti. I am writing this entry while on the beach in Jacmel, Haiti. I took a swim in the Caribbean Sea to refresh my senses. The Caribbean Sea is very warm. The black sandy beaches are beautiful here. The mountains surround the sea. And you can see you can still see the steam fog from the mountains. The three hour drive from Port au Prince to Jack Mill is full of some of the most beautiful scenery. Haiti is truly an ecological paradise. It was an adventure winding through the mountains at one at and at one I thought I was going to fall off the cliff. Every turn is a picture. At the beginning of the climb, the standard, sh the standard sh ship car sh kept stalling. I couldn't crank it. It stalled. I couldn't crank it. After I got the hang of driving through the mountains, I felt as if I was sailing. There, there are wild and domestic goats, cows, donkeys, and pigs, etc., all along the mountainside. 5 o'clock p.m. The entire trip from Port-au-Prince to Jacques Mel took me six hours round trip. I spent one and a half hours in Jacques Mel. Haiti is truly an untold paradise. The people are so well fit. They are, they are strong and healthy. Their skin is the color of the sun and earth. As I am driving, as I was driving through the mountains in the south of Haiti, I couldn't help but notice how the country people cultivated their crops. The crops are so well cultivated that the mountains look as if they have cornrows on it. I saw many ox-driven cart, carts and many donkey burden with straw and wood. I saw many women and men carrying buckets of supplies on their heads with perfect balance. The air is so fresh and clean, but one may but one may become dizzy. The country people walk these mountains, so this is why they are in good health, good physical health. This morning to Jock Mill truly made up for the going to Capetchi on La Citadel, uh, Palace, and Saint Souci. On my way back from Jack Mill, I noticed a guava tree growing very tall with green fruit. I stopped, photographed it, and ate the fruit. One of the most exciting things that happened on the beach in Jack Mill was an elderly local wood sculpture approached me with buying his wooden sculpture. It is a very heavy wooden sculpture of a black man smoking a pipe and holding a machete with the inscription Jacmel Haiti. It looked like a Haitian countryman who I saw earlier. We haggled over the price and I got him I gave him my haggle price which he accepted. The irony behind this is that Haiti is a country of negotiating. No man leaves until a solution is set. This is typical by it. This is typical by it by its market full streets. I have seen many countrymen selling their crops, Haitian rum, and real French champagne on the streets in Port-au-Prince. A person mentioned to me that Port-au-Prince is so congested, it, it's, it, it, a, a person mentioned to me uh, why hate by Port-au-Prince is so congested is because it is a place for all to meet and socialize. The tap tap buses are full with people coming to the city from the countryside. I got to see Carrefour and Leogon, other cities in southern Haiti, because I had to drive through them. I got out and photographed the Caribbean Sea at Carrefour. There are many other small towns throughout the mountains but I can't remember their names. There are, they are like villages, about 30 to 50 people. I noticed all the unfurnished mansions that were along the mountains. 
they are very huge structures who construction came to a stop and the countrymen used them for many functions. I have donkey's brain, goat's name, and cow's mooing all along the mountain. And while in the valley you could hear the echo. The people are very beautiful. They appear to glisten in the sun. Their smiles are pure white and many of the countrymen seem well at ease. I am glad I took this journey to Jacmel by myself because I would have never have enjoyed, enjoyed myself if I hired a companion. Tomorrow I shall visit the wealthiest side of Haiti, Petitionville. Petitionville is the home of the Haitian millionaires. I was so I was not hungry, so I didn't dine in the restaurant. Good night and may God bless you go. August <coughs> August 18th, Tuesday, Marvin. It is so beautiful here. I slept about 10 hours a, ni a, a, a night here and awake, awake, awoke very early in the morning. I had dreamt about the countrymen of south, southern Haiti, which I saw yesterday. This morning be before breakfast, I took a walk towards the northern part of the capital and visited the historic church Sacre Coeur. I photographed the, the the church and its surrounding. Along my walk, I saw a lot of American product advertisement, Coca-Cola, Kool-Aid, etc. I made it back to have breakfast with my friend Monsieur Joseph Guito. Mr. Guito is owner of La Fountain Super Boulangerie, the Super Fountain Bakery. Monsieur Guito lives in New York City and owns a bakery in Port-au-Prince. After breakfast, Mr. Guito invited me to his Boulangerie uh, Bakery. He mentioned he wanted me to photograph his Boulangerie. It was incredible and very hot. We passed through his rifle carrying security guard to his factory. He produced bread from some of the vendors in Port-au-Prince to sell to people of Port-au-Prince. He asked me to photograph his bakery factory and employees. He has over 30 people working here and it is very, very hot. I photographed where they needed the bread, the dough, the baking oven, the rising room, the generator, etc. The factory is in production 24 hours and has shift workers. The factory doesn't run on electricity but, but by a gas generator. After he mentioned, after, after he finished business, we drove to Petitionville and he showed me Petitionville, mainly the center square. He was my guide. The city of Petitionville sits in the mountains. He, we had to climb up the mountains to get there. In the city, in the center of town, there, are, there were the flower dealers and money exchange dealers, to, to name a few. I photographed the area. There is a monument, a monument of Alexander Saab Petition, who is one of the founding forefathers of the Republic of Haiti. It is very beautiful here. Mr. Guito to took me to the gas station so I can fill the car. Gas in Haiti is $4.25 a gallon. I didn't get to see the mansions, but I photographed some of some of them from the mountainside. 12 o'clock noon. Today I finally got to see the intelligent part of my visit to Haiti. I first visited the Mopana Museum de Pantheon National Haitien. It was given the, a, I was given a personal tour in English about the history of Haiti from the Indian Indians to the Spanish to the French and finally the African. The museum is a jewel of Haiti as Haiti is 
proud to be the first black republic. I saw the official documents, pistols, etc. of Toussaint Lavatour. I saw the original anchor of one of Christopher Columbus's ships. I saw the original portrait of Henri Stoff by Richard Evans. I saw the original pure gold crown of Emperor Faustine Ele Solok, made from pure gold, diamonds, turquoise, garnet, etc. I saw the earrings of his wife, Empress Adelina. I saw the original small flag that Haiti gave to the United States of America to place on the moon from Apollo number 11 under the presidency of Richard Nixon. I saw and touched Henri Christophe's original safe of the Palace Saint-Souzy, which was once full with treasures. I saw the Hall of Presidents. I was surprised that Haiti had a woman president by the name of Ertha Pascal Duyoc. President 1990 to 1991. I saw the wall which has all the names of Haitian freedom fighters. There are four. There are bus of. There are bus of the four founding pro fathers: Lavoisier, Dassalin, Christophe, and Petitio. There is just. This is just naming a few of the many wonders, wonderful sites, and history of Mopana. My guide told me that he was fluent in French, Creole, English, and Spanish. I finished my tour of Mopama by viewing the present art exhibition of modern Haitian artists. It is, there is no phot photographing in the museum. I then hopped over to the Museum d'Art Action. What a surprise. The main entrance was locked, so I walked around the side and found the other main entrance. I learned later why the official, official entrance was closed. I entered a visual paradise. I couldn't photograph in the museum. The museum was full with many Haitian primitive art. Primitive in respect to human, primi primitive in respect to historic Haitian artists. Many works by renowned artists William Bigou, 1931 to Wilson Bigou, 1931 to present, Robert Saint-Brice, 1980, 1893 to 1973, Jacques G. Gougui, 1931 to 1996, whose famous Im images I really like, and Hector Hippolyte, 1894 to 1948, to name a few. The museum current collection on exhibition is full of many rituals and voodoo paintings. I spoke totally in French with my tour guide. I was totally amazed that Hector Hector Hippolyte is the only artist whose personal documents are on display. Hector Hippolyte, 1894-1948, seemed to document everything. This totally reminded me of one of the purposes of my visit here to Haiti. These original Haitian paintings are so inspired with their color combination and their playful emotions of fantasy and soulfulness. The bronze sculptor, the bronze sculptures by sculptor Ludovic Boos, 1940 present, were was very inspiring as I didn't know that a realist Haitian sculptor existed. He created a breathtaking bronze full figure of Haitian founding father Toussaint Louverture and a child sculpture titled La Tonton, La Tonton. Now the Crome de la Crome. The reason that the official 
entrance was closed was because in the entranceway was a huge wood tree sculpture of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. This, this wood sculpture was the bottom half of a huge tree with all the ro huge roots. This is similar to the image of my photograph, my photo document, YouTube of the Nassau Sound, the tree graveyard. The sculpture carved in the trunk and the roots of the tree figures, the sculptor carved in the trunk and the root of the trees figures of people including Jesus Christ and the cross. It is a full scene. I imagine the sculpture weighs about 1,000 plus pounds. The reason it was placed here is because it could not be moved any further past the entrance door. So the museum closed, choose to close the main entrance and use the side entrance. These two museums are a sight to see and remember in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. As I made my way back to the hotel, I walked across La Plaza and you could see the lovers, young people, and others enjoying the fresh air and soleil sun. The water fountains are flowing and heavy, heavy Creole was hanging over the air. Compa music and some Zouk music was blasting from the tap taps everywhere. Vendors are everywhere. This is a beautiful sight to see for all the black skins bas bas basking in the soleil and enjoying nature. As I mentioned earlier, the people are in good physical health. I am extremely exhausted, however, in a good way. My entrance back to the hotel is full of the flower fragrances of the trees. The birds are singing as I continue to cross the promenade to my sal room. The staff is bonjouring and saluting all the way as I pass. Yes, this is paradise. When I got to my sal, I turned the radio on and let the compa music, compa music soothe me before I took a nap and dressed for dinner. 6 o'clock p.m. At dinner tonight, I was surprised that the only people eating in the hotel restaurant were Afro-Americans. There, there was three women from New York City, an elderly gentleman from Philadelphia, a woman from North Carolina, and myself from Florida. I ordered spaghetti with meat sauce for the second night. We had, we had polite conversation. We all enjoyed friendly, we all exchanged friendly welcomes and asked each other, are you enjoying your stay and how long are you staying? This is the last dinner I shall have in Haiti. I shall be returning to the United States of America tomorrow in the evening. However, I shall be checking out of the hotel after breakfast tomorrow. At this point, I have created over 250 photographs of a part of this beautiful Black Republic, Haiti. Its architecture and beauty is very renowned. Haiti is a beautiful, a brilliant diamond buried in the earth. To view its brilliance, you have to dig and dig deep. My walk, the, I, my walking these La Rue streets and socializing with the Haitian people has taught me a lot about patience. Things unfold in time. You must wait and let God show you his strength and beauty. I have nothing negative to say about this beautiful Black Republic, Haiti. Its beauty is everywhere in the people, the architecture, the flora, and in its language. It is getting late and I must get some rest. I had a beautiful and exhausting day. However, this that is the purpose of the trip. Tomorrow I return to the United States of America. Good night and may God bless Hugo.
August 19th, 2009, Wednesday, mercredi, final day. I could not sleep last night. I believe it is because I knew I was returning back home today. I watched a lot of Haitian television last night, mainly news commentaries and some of a little league soccer game. This is the last entrance of my Haiti trip. I am writing this entry while in the International Airport de Toussaint L'Ouverture. I walked around the capital neighborhoods this morning. The capital is bustling with people very early in the morning. As I walk up and down the mountainside roads, I am overwhelmed by all the artwork on the buildings here. Every turn, every corner has art. The murals, the murals of the Haitian artist Kabel is the majority of the murals I photograph. Kabel museums are large, full of fantasy and very colorful. Kabel is a pillar to the humanities of Haiti. I do not know if he, she is alive or dead. The only the, the the one most interesting site I photographed today was a sculpture of the famous Haitian freedom fighter Yaya, a woman, with Cabo's murals in the background. Yaya is to Haiti as Harriet Tugman is to the United States of America. Each corner opens up a, a alley road neighborhood. It is six o'clock a.m. in the morning and people are moving as if it is 12 o'clock noon. Port-au-Prince is a large city. People are coming out of everywhere. Another captivating, another captivation for me was to see all the Coca-Cola advertisement that existed here. My Creole was definitely, my Creole has definitely improved. I heard an elderly madam say to me in passing by my photographs will have beautiful will make beautiful posters in a whispering i said we oui, we oui, madame i walked more this morning because i knew i was leaving another incredible observation was that i kept hearing opera from a building i first opened i first looked at the cars and tap taps to see if it was coming from them I then learned that it was coming from a building I was passing. This was an interesting change from the Creole compa blasting from the city. I continued to walk. Many children were out of school due to summer and running along the rue and helping their families sell their products. I photographed several artisans at work. I photographed a tailor who smiled and waved but continued to work. I photographed a man machete sharpener, a, a knife machete sharpener. The sparks were flying everywhere. I photographed a furniture maker who didn't look up but was intense in his craft. It is not 6.30 a.m. and the soleil sun is full and is hot and one of the best artisan photographs I photographed was a man pulling a cart of two huge baskets if, as if an oxen. Uh, the streets are crowded with people. Some of the fried foods smell good. However, I had breakfast waiting for me at the hotel. At one point, I found myself walking in, in a circle. It is funny. I now know how to get around the capital. There are no street signs, so you must remember landmarks and markings. The Jean Bertrand Aristide Monument was my focal point. It is the highest of the monuments, and you can point, you can be, and, and can be spotted from various spots. This is truly a proud nation. Bonjour and sal bonjours and salus are present everywhere in the morning. One of my major observations is that the people go to worship church every morning. I happened upon a holiness church this morning. People were shouting on their knees, praying onto the pews. 
This truly reminded me of the good old Southern Holy Ghost churches. The preacher was going on and on and the congregation, mainly women, were shouting, hands raising and worshiping God. This diary is different from all my other diaries because I totally must rely on my humanitarian skills and, communicative and communication in order to survive. It is definitely work. People stared, but that is what people do. A simple bonjour or salute goes, salute goes a long way. I made it back to the hotel in time for breakfast. I discovered my breakfast companion, Monsieur jo Joseph Guito, had started without me. He mentioned that he was leaving in about four days, and I told him I was leaving right after breakfast. We said our au revoir, and I gave him my business card. We both vowed to stay in touch. Monsieur Guito is definitely Haitian is definitely a Haitian is definitely Haitian business oriented. He mentioned that my photographs are worth a lot of money and we both laughed. We saw our good we said our goodbyes and I departed for the airport. I drove my by myself to the airport with no problem. From the hotel Avenida Avenue, Martin Luther King Junior took you to Tucson Levateur International Airport. Talking about truly black republic, Martin Luther King to Tucson Levateur, right on. As I sat in the terminal, heavy Creole is heard everywhere. Some French tourists are speaking French and a little Caribbean English is heard. I walked up stairs to the duty-free store and purchased two bottles of Haitian rum, Berlin View Lab, to take back to the United States of America. Haiti is a country where you must come with plenty cash. Credit cards are fine for hotels, etc., but to purchase things, you must have cash. I came to Haiti with credit cards, with credit cards and twenty one dollar U.S. bills, four five dollar bills, and six ten dollar bills, which in a day and a half all the one dollar bills were gone. That left me with fives and tens, and they do not give change. I really have, I really had to do some maneuvering. I didn't want to change my money to hate to the Haitian gold because the vendors like U.S. dollars. This helped because when I filled my gas, it came to twenty-five dollars for U.S. dollars for six gallons. However, the first time to the country is always an experience. I may not have many gifts to bring back, but the only but but now over two thirty, but now over three hundred photographs of this beautiful Black Republic Haiti is priceless. My flight is ready to depart. Returning entry. The returning flight, the return flight from Haiti was very exciting. The plane was full. I sat with two other Haitian gentlemen around my age, and we talked about everything from Haitian politics to the new resort Haiti is planning on, planning for the island Gonal. We laughed, talked, and shared brief and laugh and, and shared briefs and laughed some more. I told them about all the historic how the Haitian Haitian history which existed in the museum in the capital. They were really amazed. They stated they were born and raised in Haiti and didn't know these museums existed. They told me the story about the theft of the original Neg Meron statue. They mentioned that the that the Neg Meron now on the square across La Plaza Nationale is a reproduction. They mentioned that the thief that the theft happened so smoothly that it just disappeared and reappeared. They mentioned it happened several years ago. I found this story very in interesting. Truth or fiction, this is an interesting listening. We laughed about how the lights in Haiti go on and off, especially going and off 
unexpectedly, and they mentioned that it was all political. They talked about how Haitian politics is the politics of self-preservation. As we were filling our, out our custom forms, I claimed, declared my two bottles of Haitian rum. They told me the story of Petitionville. They mentioned that Petitionville is the richest area in all of Haiti. That Petitionville is a city of old family wealth that never changed hands, but stays in the family. Never changed hands, but stays in the family. I told them about the great deal I got with the airlines that, uh, with the airlines, and they mentioned that they would check it out. One of the gentlemen mentioned he lived in the he lives in the United States for six months and returned to Haiti for six months. I mentioned to him that he needs to check out the airlines I mentioned, the airline I mentioned. The other gentleman mentioned that he owned a security company in Haiti and now that his business is going well, the government wants a piece of the action. We talked the entire two hours of the flight. This it has been a very enjoyable, a very enjoyable journey in my life. I have new friends and was just and was given the warm welcome to come back again. I just might do that. What can I say about Haiti? Haiti is a gem. Haiti is a black diamond. Haiti is a place for romance. Haiti is a place of ecological beauty. Beauty. Haiti is a paradise that I that. I only can I only saw a small glimpse of this black diamond. I want to thank all the staff of La Plaza Hotel, Ten Rue Copois, Chambre de Moi, Port au Prince, La Plaza Hotels. I shall like to thank Visa A Avis car rental who made my driving smooth, just a few bumps. I would like to thank all the beautiful people of the Black Republic, Haiti. Lastly, I should like to thank God Almighty for showing me this beautiful Black Republic, Haiti, I, I, Haiti. Hugo, copyright, Hugo, all rights reserved.